Pittsburgh head coach Pat Narduzzi has done exactly what you would expect any defensive head coach not named Nick Saban to do. He has lost to teams he has no right losing to, and beaten teams he has no right beating, all while being one of the sole few responsible for keeping pro-style offensive coordinators employed. Since he is a defensive coach, I thought it would be appropriate to start with a defense he has helped to popularize. The pattern read, Cover 4 Defense. Cover 4 implies that at any one time, you have four defenders in deep coverage, with each one having a quarter of the field, hence the name Cover 4, or Quarters Defense. Having two deep safeties is nice for defending the pass, but it leaves you with one less player in run fits. That's why many teams choose to play a lot of one high coverages. How Narduzzi sidesteps this issue is by playing a cover four man match zone. In essence, these corners are each responsible for a quarter of the deep part of the field. This allows both of these safeties a bit more freedom to come up and make plays in the box. Now let's take a look at what this defense looks like in action. Watch here as the safety is a bit slow to fill the gap, but once he triggers, he isn't afraid to get behind his pads. Because of their physicality and the fact that they should always have equal numbers to the perimeter, they're also pretty effective in stopping quick screens. This defensive style gives the already stellar pit defensive line and linebackers license to play with full abandon, knowing that they have two safeties behind them to clean up any messes. Because of this, they have one of the best rush defenses in the country. But there's more to their base coverage than just playing a simple zone cover 4. What makes it modern and effective against spread offenses is its ability to adjust to what offenses throw at it. Let's take a look at the responsibilities against a 2x2 formation, meaning two receivers on each side. The corners have this outside or number 1 receiver. If he goes straight down the field or outside, they stick to him like they're playing man. If he stays short or goes inside, they drop deep and look for number 2 coming their way. The deep safeties are initially watching the number two receiver. If he goes deep, the safety sticks with him. If he stays short, then the safety has to come off him and look for another receiver to potentially challenge the deep middle of the field. The outside linebacker's job is to reroute the number two receiver and then drop to the sideline about 10 yards deep, while the middle linebacker is responsible for anyone coming across or through the middle of the field. Against this four verticals concept, you can see the corners basically play man on the outside the outside linebackers try to reroute the slot defenders, and then the safeties take over from there. Their rules are similar against 3x1. The biggest difference is the weak side safety. Since there's no true number 2 receiver to his side, he is now responsible for the number 3 receiver on the other side. If he goes deep or across the middle, then this safety has to pick him up. Notice how they are able to adjust to this 4 verticals concept against trips in much the same way they did against the 2x2 formation. This man zone hybrid makes things hard on quarterbacks. The beginning of this play looks completely like the corners playing man on this receiver, but peels off last second to make a great play for the interception. While this pit defense is a solid group, there are always holes to any scheme. Of course, first any cover four scheme, the flats are a weakness. In this two by two set by NC State, they run the corner off with a vertical on the outside, which leaves this safety to cover this quick out by the number two receiver. Miami was able to scrape together two big play touchdowns by exploiting another potential weakness of this defense. In this wide split 2x2 formation, it draws the safeties and corners out on their keys. Technically, this leaves the middle linebacker to have to man up the running back coming out of the backfield. If this wasn't a mismatch enough, he bites hard on the run fake and the back is left with nothing but green grass ahead of him. The last way I might try to attack this defense is by running out of trips formations. Remember if this receiver runs deep, this corner has to stick with him, and this backside safety is responsible for this number 3 receiver on the other side of the field. Watch his eyes immediately after the ball is snapped. This draws him away from the play and in essence takes away any secondary run support on the short side of the field. Now I could talk about this group all day. They run a fun scheme and they're definitely good at it. Their offense is a bit less exciting. Offensive coordinator Mark Whipple is a pro-style guy, meaning he loves varying his formations, personnel, and motions. This can be a good thing, and it can be a detriment. I personally feel like they can get a bit predictable at times. If they're giving an under center look, they are running more times than not. If they give a four receiver look, they are passing more times than not. I mean, look at this play. The linebackers aren't worried for a second about the run threat, and immediately get depth into the passing lane. 
but when they do mix things up, they can get some easy yards. A draw play out of this spread formation takes the defense by surprise and nets a decent gain for Pitt. This is compounded by their inability to establish any kind of run game. They're in the bottom five of FBS football when it comes to yards per rushing attempt. On the passing side of things, they tend towards the deep ball. This can net them some explosive gains, but it can also lead to plays taking too long to develop and makes life harder on the quarterback. However, none of these things seem to be as big of an issue when starting quarterback Kenny Pickett was playing. He was agile enough to make plays when escaping from the pocket, and he's a very capable passer. But since he's been injured, the Pitt offense hasn't had much going for it. They have tried to make life easier for young Joey Yellen with more quick game concepts, but they often telegraph these using condensed formations. Now both of these teams have wide receivers that struggle with drops and getting separation, and they both have injured quarterbacks that allow the offense to function. The biggest difference to me is that Pitt has a defense that can play well, but Florida State has a more competent running game. At the end of the day, the prediction for me is easy. Whoever has the healthier starting quarterback come game time will likely be the one that takes home this victory.